Platinum Dream LLC is a growing company that helps in credit repair. If you have a low score and you're trying to get that dream home or that dream car, call Platinum Dream LLC and they could definitely help you get the job done. Everywhere you look around, there's a logo connected to a company, whether big or small. And today, we are going to get into the origins of Hershey. Milton Snavely Hershey was born on September 13, 1857 in Derry Church, Pennsylvania. Hershey had one younger sister who died when she was four. His father was prone to what Hershey history calls get rich schemes and all of those schemes which included a trout farm failed attempts to find that one last working scheme meant a lot of moving around so young hershey attended seven different schools before ultimately ending his formal education at the fourth grade hershey coming from a poor family and not able to afford any schooling apprenticed with a master confectioner for four years and then opened a candy shop in Lancaster, Philadelphia. His shop was open for six years before it failed and Hershey apprenticed with another confectioner in Denver where he learned to make caramel. Hershey tried again with his business in New York and again it failed, which led Hershey to return back to Pennsylvania where he founded the Lancaster Caramel Company in 1886. Hershey was plagued with bad credit after previous failures and his caramel company was in serious danger of failing too. Hershey's family, who had invested in his failed businesses, largely shunned him. The exception was an aunt who gave him a loan to buy his first caramel making equipment. He spent days making candy and nights selling them from a pushcart and found his calling. A bank cashier also came to the rescue by co-signing the loan himself, giving Hershey the money he needed for a batch of raw ingredients that would keep the company going. Hershey's caramels were made with the finest imported ingredients and products and his involvement in caramels was ultimately short-lived but profitable. The use of fresh milk in caramel proved successful and Hershey was soon running a profitable enterprise that employed more than 1400 workers and delivered caramels all over the globe. So in 1900, after seeing chocolate making machines for the first time at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Hershey sold his caramel company for $1 million. Today will equal $30,732,000. And he concentrated on chocolate. Other well-known companies that came out of the expo was Cracker Jack, Juicy Fruit, Aunt Jemima, and Cream of Wheat. To the many people that questioned him, he said, caramels are just a fad, but chocolate is a permanent thing. In 1896, Hershey built a milk processing plant so he could create and refine a recipe for his milk chocolate candies. At the time, the recipe for milk chocolate was closely guarded by the Swiss because it was considered a luxury and it took years of trial and error before Hershey found the perfect combination of milk, sugar and cocoa for his Hershey's chocolate bar. So in 1899, he developed the Hershey process, which is less sensitive to milk quality than traditional methods. In 1900, he began manufacturing Hershey's milk chocolate bars, also known as Hershey's bars or Hershey bars. Hershey could have ended up being a name that sunk away with the Titanic in the early 1900s. Hershey was a confirmed passenger on the Titanic ill-fated 1912 voyage. He and his wife had been vacationing in Nice, France for the winter of 1911 and when it came time to head back to the States, he booked passage on the Titanic. It's not clear what happened to make him change his plans, though it was likely work-related. 
Hershey ended up booking passage under America and leaving Europe just four days before Titanic. Unable to have children of his own, Milton founded the Hershey Industrial School in 1909 for white orphan boys. In 1918, three years after the death of his wife, Milton Hershey donated around $90 million to the boarding school in trust, as well as 40% of the Hershey's company's common stock. The school's initial purpose was to train young men in trades, but eventually shifted to focus on preparation for college. The Hershey Trust Company has exercised voting rights for the school and has been a trustee since its founding. Many of its designs resemble Hershey chocolate products, such as the Hershey Kisses streetlights. Milton Hershey was involved in the school's operations until his death in 1945. The Hershey Industrial School was renamed the Milton Hershey School in 1951. The original Hershey's milk chocolate bar wrapper featured gold lettering on white glossy paper. Hershey's classic maroon color paper was introduced about 1902 but featured gold lettering. The maroon label was redesigned as a sleeve around the bar, revealing the foil inner wrap on either end of the bar. Hershey's company became so big that in 1903, he decided to relocate back to his birthplace, Derry Church, Pennsylvania, which later was renamed Hershey, Pennsylvania, in his honor. The plots of land Hershey chose were close to the Burks and Dauphin Turnpike, as well as the Reading and Philadelphia Railroads. There was a massive labor pool of rural families who were ready to work and it was also close to one of his factory's main ingredients, fresh milk. Even state officials resisted Hershey's plan to incorporate the town, but he persisted. The first streets, Chocolate and Cocoa Avenue, were laid and the first houses went up and Hershey finally got a post office in 1906. Hershey created an unincorporated community called Hershey developed around a factory with a finely tuned infrastructure of housing, schools, churches, and parks to keep his workers happy and healthy. In return, workers at the Hershey factory were the best in the business, putting care into their products unlike workers in other industries. That factory also had no windows so his workers would not get distracted. Even today, the Hershey's Chocolate Company works to provide unprecedented resources to its workers. There are countless recreational spaces around the town, including convention halls, swimming pools, and Hershey's Amusement Park. Also the same year, the gold lettering was embossed, created a three-dimensional effect on the label and that wrapper was in 1906. From 1906 to 1911, Hershey switched to silver ink following a complaint from another confectionery company who claimed that Hershey was infringing on their product trademark. The classic block letter design Hershey's on the bar wrapper was introduced in 1912. Hershey found most of his success in creating and selling simple chocolate bars and in 1896 Hershey was selling 114 different products. A lot of his competitors were also selling the same kind of chocolate, so he came up with a way and product to separate himself from the rest. In 1907, Hershey came up with the wonderful idea of a product called Hershey Kisses, which was hand wrapped in lovely foil. Kiss came out 13 years after another Pennsylvania chocolatier named Henry Oscar Wilbur introduced the Wilbur Bud. The chocolates had the same shape but while the bud was created using individual molds, Hershey was having them mass produced. But it wasn't until 1921 when the machine wrapping was introduced that Hershey was able to speed up the process and also add the famous ribbon to all of Hershey Kiss's products to show that it was authentic, which now produces 70 million kisses a day. After his success with Hershey Kisses, his next product was milk chocolate with almonds in 1908, Mr. Good Bar with peanuts in 1925, and Crackle with crisp rice in 1938. Mr. Good Bar name came about by accident. 
Hershey chemist Samuel Hinkle started thinking about putting peanuts in their product in the 1920s. It took a surprising amount of experimentation and led to Hershey's use of Spanish peanuts over Virginia peanuts. And when it came time to come up with a name for the bar of chocolate, it was a complete accident. Hinkle says someone remarked, that's a good bar. And Hershey, who was going a bit deaf at the time, misheard it as Mr. Good Bar. The name stuck through decades of some fascinating marketing. Hershey only trademarked the name in 2000, and that's because it's actual a generic name for a piece of candy wrapped with a little twist. The term dates back to at least the 1820s, and throughout the 19th century, it was actually defined in dictionaries as simply referring to a small piece of confectionery. Since it was such a generic term, Hershey wasn't allowed to trademark it. It would be like Papa John's trying to trademark the term pizza. There are all kinds of kisses on the market. You could pick up some molasses kisses, violet or bluebell kisses, lucky kisses, or even honeycorn kisses. Fast forward decades, and it wasn't until 2000 that Hershey convinced the courts the kiss had become so firmly associated with them, it was part of the brand, and they won their trademark. Former Hershey's employee, Harry Burnett Reese, found fame with his fantastic peanut butter cup when he created his company called the H.B. Reese Candy Company in 1923. He was laid off from his job at Hershey and decided he was going to start his own candy company. Reese was following his mother's footsteps too when he started out making her chocolate covered raisins and almonds. After working for Hershey, he asked for their blessing and permission to start his own company. They gave it as long as he bought his chocolate from them. Reese agreed and in 1928, a chance conversation with a candy store owner gave him the nudge he needed. With help from a 50 pound can of peanut butter, Reese developed his peanut butter cups. Reese died on May 16, 1956 in West Palm Beach, Florida, leaving the company to his six sons. On July 2, 1963, the H.B. Reese Candy Company merged with the Hershey Chocolate Corporation in a tax-free stock-for-stock merger. In 1969, only six years after the Reese Hershey merger, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups became the Hershey's company's top seller. As of today, the stock merger they did in 1963 today is worth about $2.5 billion. Hershey syrup was also created by chemist Sam Hinkle after an insane amount of work on figuring out how to turn it into liquid and into a can and then to ship across the country. At first, it was only for commercial companies to purchase, but later, after many requests for a non-commercial product, they obliged and in 1956 created their own cans to put them in and replaced them with bottles in 1979. Labor unrest came to Hershey in the late 1930s as a Congress of Industrial Organizations back union attempted to organize the factory workers. A failed sit-down strike in 1937 ended in violence. Loyalist workers and local dairy farmers beat many of the strikers as they attempted to leave the plant. By 1940, an affiliate of the American Federation of Labor had successfully organized Hershey's workers under the leadership of John Shear, who became the first president of local chapter number 464, of the Barclay Confectionery Tobacco Workers and Grain Millers International Union. Local 464 still represents the Hershey workforce as of today. Shortly before World War II, Bruce Murray, son of longtime Hershey's president William F.R. Murray, struck a deal with Forrest Mars to create hard sugar coated chocolate that will be called M&Ms for Mars and Murray. Murray had a 20% interest in the product, which used Hershey's chocolate during World War II rationing. In 1948, Mars bought out Murray and became one of Hershey's main competitors. Hershey also contributed to World War II by creating Field Rationing D, an emergency nutrition bar that did not melt in tropical heat and was intentionally not tasty enough 
to tempt soldiers to eat it as a snack. By 1939, Hershey was cranking out 100,000 field rationing D bars a day, a number that skyrocketed to 24 million a week in 1945. Over the course of the war, Hershey supplied around 3 billion of the bars to soldiers worldwide, and it made such a difference in the war effort, Hershey was given a military medal. And every employee also got recognized for their contributions. Later, that same chocolate bar would be used by another government agency, NASA. Hershey's tropical chocolate bar made it to the moon in the pockets of Apollo's 15 astronauts. After World War II ended, Hershey Chocolate Corporation continued to use white glassine paper as an inner wrapper for its milk chocolate bars as a cost saving measure. The price for raw cocoa beans fluctuated dramatically during the 1950s. Hershey Chocolate Corporation was committed to maintaining a five cent price for its candy bars. To respond to the dramatically changing prices for the raw ingredients, Hershey changed the weight of its candy bars, decreasing bar weight when cocoa bean prices soared and increasing the weight when bean prices declined. As another cost saving measure, Hershey discontinued embossing the silver printing on its labels in 1950. In recognition of its diversification, the company was renamed Hershey Foods Corporation in 1968. After years of Hershey's being five cents a chocolate bar, now it was 10 cents and the size was cut down. In the 1970s, Hershey started to do commercials for the first time due to more competition, but mostly from Mars Incorporated. In 1969, Hershey received a license from Roundtrees to manufacture and market Kit Kat and Rolo in the United States. After Hershey's competitor Nestle acquired Roundtrees in 1988, it was still required to honor their agreement and so Hershey continues to make and market the products in the US. The license would revert to Nestle if Hershey was sold. This became a sticking point in Hershey's failed attempt to attract a serious buy in 2002. And even Nestle rejected Hershey's asking price feeling that the economics would not work. In 1977, Hershey bought YNS Candies, founded in 1845 and became the makers of Twizzlers licorice candies. In 1986, Hershey's made a brief dabble into cough drops when it acquired the Ludens cough drop brand. In 1988, Hershey's bought the rights to manufacture and distribute many Cadbury branded products in the United States, except gum and mints, which are part of Mondelez International. In 2015, they sued a British importer to halt imports of British Cadbury chocolates, which repeatedly angered customers. A merger between Mondelez and Hershey's was considered but abandoned in 2016 after Hershey's turned down a $23 billion cash and stock bid. Hershey made a major expansion into non-chocolate candies in 1996 when it acquired Leaf North America, owner of the Jolly Rancher and Payday brands. In 1999, the Hershey Pasta Group was divested to several equity partners to form the New World Pasta Company, now part of Ebro Foods. In 1973, Hershey's ended its long-lasting tours of its company since 1915 of Hershey's Chocolate World. In its place, a kind of museum with interactive exhibits opened as a replacement. Additional Hershey Worlds were opened in different cities. Also the same year, on December 12, 1973, Hershey Foods Corporation added nutritional labeling on all of its candy bars, a first in the confectionery industry. In 2003, to enhance product freshness, Hershey discontinued its traditional foil inner wrap and paper wrapper and began wrapping its milk chocolate bars with a single fin seal film wrapper. Additionally, Hershey's Food Corporation officially changed its name to the Hershey Company in 2005. On July 25, 2002, it became known that the Hershey Trust Company was seeking to sell its control and interest in the Hershey Foods Corporation. The value of Hershey's stock rose 25% in a single day, 
with over 19 million shares traded over the following 55 days, widespread press coverage as well as pressure from Pennsylvania Attorney General Mike Fisher, the community of Hershey and Daffin County Orphans Court Senior Judge Warren G. Morgan led to the sale being abandoned. The seven Hershey's trustees who voted to sell Hershey Foods on September 17, 2002 for $12.5 billion to the William Wigley Jr. Company, now part of Mars Incorporated, were removed by Attorney General Fisher and Judge Morgan. Ten of the 17 trustees were forced to resign and four new members who live locally were appointed. The former Pennsylvania Attorney General Leroy S. Zimmerman became the new chairman of the reconstituted Milton Hershey School trustees. Mr. Zimmerman has publicly committed to having the Milton Hershey School Trust always retain its interest in the Hershey Company. From 2004 and up, Hershey continued to buy up more companies like the Mauna Loa Macadamia Nut Corp in 2004, Scherfenberger in July 2005, Joseph Schmidt Confections in November 2005, Dagoba Organic Chocolate in 2006, Brookside Foods in 2011, Krav Jerky in 2015, which Hershey sold in 2020, Barkins in 2016. Also in 2016, the Hershey Company added silver to the edges of the fin seal to replicate the formal foil inner wrap and a stamp to indicate that Hershey's chocolate is made with farm fresh milk. In 2010, in honor of the Milton Hershey School's 100th anniversary, Hershey added a message to the bar. Every Hershey's product you've enjoyed has helped support children in need through Milton Hershey School. In August 2016, an attempt to sell Hershey to Mandela's International was abandoned because of objections by the Hershey Trust. In 2017, Hershey bought Amplify Snack Brands, Austin, Texas-based maker of Skinny Pop, in an all-cash transaction valued at approximately $1.6 billion. In September 2018, Hershey announced to buy Pirate Brands from B&G Foods for $420 million in an all-cash deal. In August 2019, Hershey announced it would purchase protein bar maker One Brands LLC for $397 million. In October 2019, Hershey's announced a collaboration with Yingling to produce a limited release collaboration beer titled Yingling Hershey's Chocolate Porter, becoming Hershey's first licensed beer partnership. Hershey had many plants all over the U.S. and outside of the U.S., including Smith's Falls, Ontario, Oakdale, California, Monterey, Mexico, Saroque, Brazil, Mandidi, India, Stewart's Draft, Virginia, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Hazleton, Pennsylvania, Memphis, Tennessee, Robinson, Illinois, and Guadalajara, Mexico. Hershey has made large contributions to education. One of their most notable contributions was the Elizabethtown College Honors Program. The program was established in 1999 and is funded partially through the endowment. In 2015, Hershey announced a commitment to the Clinton Global Initiative to help build a sustainable supply chain to support basic nutrition for children in Ghana. Hershey's long-term focus on children and families has yielded long-standing partnerships with organizations such as Children's Miracle Network, Ronald McDonald House, and United Way. In 2016, the company donated more than $486,000 to those organizations. Hershey has many entertainment groups and resort groups. They have Hershey Park, Zoo America Wildlife Park, Hershey Park Stadium, the Hotel Hershey, Hershey Lodge, Melt Spa by Hershey, and many more. 
Some of their chocolate based products are Fifth Avenue, Air Delight, Almond Joy, Bar None, Bliss, Brookside, Cream Egg, Nutrageous, Bubble Yum, Brett Savers, Payday, O'Henry, and many, many other chocolate bars that are being sold all over the world. Hershey has been criticized for not having programs to ensure sustainable and ethical cocoa purchases, lagging behind its competitors in fair trade measures. The Raise the Bar Hershey campaign was launched in September 2010 by Global Exchange Green America, the Oasis Trust, and the International Labor Rights Forum. The purpose of the Raise the Bar campaign was to pressure Hershey to commit to take immediate action to eliminate forced and child labor from Hershey's cocoa supply, to source in 100% fair trade certified cocoa beans by 2012 for at least one of its top five selling chocolate bars, making at least one additional top five selling bar 100% fair trade certified every two years thereafter and that the majority of Hershey's cocoa across all products will be fair trade certified by 2022. The pressure was particularly directed at Whole Foods Market, which announced on October 3rd, 2012, that it would cease carrying Hershey's Schaffernberger line. The campaign stated, Whole Foods' decision follows more than 40 natural food retailers publicly expressing concern about carrying Schaffenberger and Dagoba products as a consequence of the giant chocolate maker's refusal to address child labor in its supply chain. The same day, Hershey's announced it would source 100% certified cocoa for its global chocolate product lines by 2020 and accelerate its programs to help eliminate child labor in the cocoa regions of West Africa. In 2019, Hershey announced that they could not guarantee that their chocolate products were free from child slave labor as they could trace only about 50% of their purchasing back to the farm level. The Washington Post noted that the commitment taken in 2001 to eradicate such practices within four years has not been kept, neither at the due deadline of 2005, nor within the revised deadlines of 2008 and 2010, and that the result was not likely to be achieved by 2020 either. A company about Hershey says, for years, child labor in the chocolate companies has been used as a cheap method of production. The more the issue was recognized and addressed, the less it became a problem. However, the Hershey company is recognized as being the only chocolate company that is using child labor. Reports of the violations occurring on these cocoa farms included the trafficking of children from Mali, sexual and physical abuse, low wages, and inhumane conditions. These children are being sold to companies like Hershey's as if they are products. They are being sold for the benefit of the company. It is evident that they are treating these children like animals. People that own a job can testify to the fact that it can become a tiring and stressful situation. Imagine what it's like to a child having to carry burdens that aren't meant for them, to carry and being mistreated on top of that. For well over a decade, Hershey has turned a blind eye to the abusive child labor practices in the West African countries that supply Hershey with the majority of its cocoa-derived products. The company has claimed that they would take action to eliminate the illegal acts going on in their factories, but are really furthering it by using children to produce their chocolate bars. The kind of business that this company is doing is just pure evil, and they recognize that. They are more interested in the money that they earn from the amount of chocolate that they could have sold. Some companies will do what they can and have to do to get ahead and apparently this is the device that the Hershey company is using. The founder Milton S. Hershey owns a school for orphan boys yet has the company operating in child and forced labor. It's too bad that they can't see the hypocrisy of funding a school 
for those less fortunate, using profits from which child labor, slave labor, and horrible working conditions in the cocoa grown regions of West Africa are coming from. Sure, on the outside it looks good. Funding a school for those less fortunate sounds like a good cover up. It sweep all the garbage under. It is actually a heartwarming story, but when you are exposed to the horrible truth, it becomes just the opposite, a heart-wrenching story. In 2021, Hershey was named in a class action lawsuit filed by eight former child slaves from Mali who alleged that the company aided and abetted their enslavement on cocoa plantations in Ivory Coast. The suit accused Hershey, along with Nestle, Cargill, Mars Incorporated, Olam International, Barry Calbot, and Mandela's International of knowingly engaging in forced labor, and the plaintiffs sought damages for unjust enrichment, negligent supervision, and international infliction of emotional distress. As far as the case is being brought under the Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act of 2017. IRA is currently involved in a separate complaint filed under the Alien Tort Statute against Nestle and Cargill. In a statement, Cargill said, We are aware of the filing and while we cannot comment on specifics of this case right now, the company wants to reinforce we have no tolerance for child labor in the cocoa production. Children belong in school. They deserve safe living conditions and access to good nutrition. Nesto said that the lawsuit does not advance the sheer goal of ending child labor in a cocoa industry and added child labor is unacceptable and goes against everything we stand for. Nesto has explicit policies against it and is unwavering in our dedication to ending it. We remain committed to combating child labor within the cocoa supply chain and addressing its root causes as part of the Nesto Cocoa Plan and through collaborative efforts. Responding to news of the lawsuit, a Mars spokesman said, We don't comment on any possible pending litigation. Mandela said it did not wish to comment. Barry Calbot said it has committed to eradicating child labor from its supply chain by 2025. Every year we publish the progress we have made against this target in our Forever Chocolate Progress report, it said. And Olam spokesperson said that the company has a zero tolerance policy for forced or slave labor in their supply chain. If we were to identify any instances, we would immediately take action, which includes notifying the appropriate authorities, they said. The spokesperson for Hershey said, We understand and agree with the concerns about the heartbreaking instances of child and forced labor. Hershey does not tolerate child or forced labor in our supply chain. These human rights violations have no place in the global cocoa industry, and we have committed to ending it. Effectively eliminating human rights violations and addressing the underlying issues of poverty that is the root cause of these labor violations requires significant investment and intervention on the ground in West Africa, not in the courts. We have worked hard over the past several years to implement meaningful programs and work with our cocoa suppliers and West African governments to combat these issues and use our influence to make a positive impact. In another lawsuit, Hershey Entertainment and Resorts Company will pay more than $100,000 to settle a federal minimum wage lawsuit filed on behalf of 41 wait staff at a restaurant in Hershey. The settlement comes 15 months after a former worker, Randy Sicklesmith, filed the suit. Sicklesmith claimed Hershey Entertainment was paying the wait staff $2.83 an hour plus tips and that their pay ended up below the minimum federal hourly rate of $7.25 because they spent about 30% of their time performing tasks that did not generate tips such as cleaning and sorting tableware. 
The suit and the $100,000 settlement covers the period from January 2017 to September 2019. It states that in agreeing to the accord, Hershey Entertainment denies any wrongdoing and continue to assert that. Absent this settlement, they ultimately would prevail in the action. The deal calls for $64,000 to be paid to 41 former and current wait staff. They will receive payments ranging from $104 to $3,917. Sicklesmith will receive another $4,000 for originating the case. Winebreak and Santello, the dresser law firm that represented the workers, is to receive $33,000. Milton S. Hershey died on October 13, 1945 in Hershey, Pennsylvania and was buried in the Hershey Cemetery that was established in 1918. The Hershey community was so small, he never thought about it needing a cemetery until his wife, Catherine Sweeney Hershey, died in 1915 of a chronic illness. Some of the notable people who are at rest there are Catherine Sweeney Hershey, wife of Milton Hershey, Fanny Snavely Hershey, mother of Milton Hershey, Henry Hershey, father of Milton Hershey, Milton S. Hershey, chocolatier, businessman, and philanthropist. H. B. Reese, inventor and businessman known for creating Reese peanut butter cups. The history of chocolate has been around for many of years. The cocoa tree was cultivated more than 3,000 years ago by the Maya, Toltec, and Aztec peoples who prepared a beverage from its fruit, the cocoa bean, sometimes using it as a ceremonial drink and also used the bean as a currency. The Maya considered chocolate to be the food of the god and even buried dignitaries with bowls of the substance along with other items deemed useful in the afterlife. In the 1600s, chocolate was sold in London, but only the elites were able to afford it. In the 1700s, the English improved on chocolate by adding milk, and it was not until the 1900s that the price started to go down and anyone was able to purchase it. In 1876, Daniel Peter of Switzerland added dried milk to make milk chocolate. The proliferation of flavored solid and coated chocolate foods rapidly followed. And from all the additions of improving our chocolate and adding different twists, are we able to enjoy all the rich, fine chocolate that was once a delicacy for the rich and elite? As of today, the Hershey Company is worth an estimated $10 billion. Hershey is still going strong with amusement parks, museums, the Hershey School, and many other activities they have going on. If you enjoyed this video and want to be updated on new brands and companies, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to hear about or have any new suggestions on any other companies you would like to hear about, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will definitely look into it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more companies coming up.